welcome to Oddie's Airsoft and uh, today we're going to be talking about uh, different loadouts uh, and we're going to focus on the World War II loadout. Four Scream Jaeger were German paratroopers who participated in many of the famous battles of World War II and in many theatres. As elite troops they were frequently deployed at the vanguard of attacks and as the bulwark of defence. They would see action in the Norway and Denmark campaign and in Belgium, Holland and France in 1940. Major actions in the Balkans campaign, Crete, Italy, and on both the Eastern Front and later the Western Front would follow. This would be a German Fallschirmjäger pattern smock that I'm wearing. They have two vertical pockets up here at the chest, which was handy for keeping your ammunition and bits and pieces in it. In. Also what I'm wearing is a bandolier. Now this is more for a K98, which would have the pockets here for the ammunition to go into. Also is the Luftwaffe belt, which all units of the Luftwaffe wore. To my side here is what is commonly known as a bread bag. This would be for keeping foodstuffs general sundry items, or in this case, BB pellets. The smocks also have two large pockets on the front here, which are very handy for carrying ammunition magazine clips. So that means you don't have to wear an awful lot of gear, as in Y straps and extra bits on you, apart from your water bottle, stuff like that. The trousers are actually Fortune Jaeger trousers. They have, these ones are actually made with slits in the side, which open buttons. These were actually for putting on knee pads when they actually parachuted and dropped. On the other side, there's an interesting pocket, if I can pull up the smock, there's another pocket which is buttoned, and this was, had a pocket inside for the gravity knife, which was used for cutting shroud lines if you were stuck in a tree. This particular pattern is very similar to their Zeltband pattern, and later in the war the smock changed to a kind of a more marsh pattern or a blurred pattern. Now the paratroopers also have what's known as their Fallschirm Stahlhelm, which is their helmet. It differs from the ordinary German helmet, as it did away with the brim, was cut away. It also is very similar to a British design with the straps at the back of the neck, keeping it in place. Germans had also a camouflage cover for this, but they also used hemp or rope netting and other bits and pieces to keep foliage on, the, on their helmet. Particularly what I'm wearing here might be late war, as the paratroopers were forbidden for any drops after Crete. Hitler stopped them from jumping due to their losses. This would be a typical lowdown on a late war soldier fighting for the Wehrmacht. A lot of people think that all your equipment has to be matching and all colours have to be matching, but that's absolutely wrong. At the end of the war, the Germans used anything they could get their hands on, what was practical. This man here holds the SG-44, which is an assault rifle. This would be the first type of assault rifle that was invented in the world. Also, the, It was also known as the MP-44. His actual tunic consists of a windbreaker type of tunic. This type was worn by mountain troops or snipers. Again, it depended on supply on whoever was issued with them. He wears a foliage cover on his helmet. Again, these were brought out mid-war, I think about 1943, roughly. Again, this was to take away the shine of the German he army helmet and also it has foliage loops for placing foliage into it. If we pan down, he carries his gas mask canister on his back. This, of course, doesn't have a gas mask. It's very handy for keeping your batteries, BBs, or any other bits and pieces that you want to keep dry or out of the way, or out of harm's way. If I pan around here, he has a P-38 Luger. In this one we have a Luger. Again, a lot of German army had this at the start of the war. P-38 was also popular, but the Luger would be an iconic weapon, which um, obviously a lot of soldiers liked, and a lot were taken as souvenirs at the end of the war. If I pan around here, all the belt buckles different from the different services. This says God with us. This is the German standard army buckle which was worn by all German army units. The SS, Hitler Youth, and Air Force buckles different. As we pan down, he has a pair of camo trousers again. These types of trousers were made generally by tailors in the company units. Again, it's made of Zeltbahn material. And then finished off, not with jack boots, but with late war boots and gaiters. On this side here, we have his water bottle. These were covered with a felt cover. And also had a, had, a, had a drinking cup on top, and these were secured to the uniform. Again, the trooper isn't wearing Y straps. Again, towards the end of the war, they were carrying, they weren't carrying as much equipment as earlier on. 
and it makes it a little bit easier for playing airsoft rather than having yourself weighed down with gear. Don't go down the back. You've, you know you've, you've, your gaiters, they should be that way. Yeah, yeah. You probably could, prefer doing them that way. I couldn't bend down yeah, put them okay. on any other way for I'll sake. just, I'll talk. 52. That's not You're too fucking old to be playing airsoft. <laughs> You're playing it. <laughs> right. And you have to say, I only have a, a captain's rank because I'm old. I didn't want to be anything less. <laughs> I'm trying to think which what race rank that is. Oh, it is three. Three pips, yeah. No, two pips is a captain. That's um, oak leaves and three bars. I don't know. I'd have to look at my book. I thought it was captain because I bought it from Epic and it was down as a captain. Well, you know on your shoulder, on your, on your board.